Imagine this, you just got off work after a hard day and all you want to do is relax on your commute home. You get to the bus station, the bus finally comes, and you get to your favorite spot, which is at the back of the bus, where no one can bother you. Am I the only one like that? You plop down on your seat, put in your headphones, put on the playlist or maybe your favorite podcast, and just drift off from the world. You're chilling, you're relaxed, you are falling asleep. All of a sudden, the person besides you starts stabbing you in the neck and in the chest. If you guys are from Canada, you know exactly what case I'm talking about and you are correct. This is the case of Vince Lee, aka the Greyhound Bus Killer. Welcome back to my channel, my name is Jessie and welcome to another true crime baking video where I discuss Canadian true crime cases while I make some delicious baked goodies. I try to make some delicious baked cookies, goodies, I try my best, okay? Today we're going to try making the three ingredient no oven chocolate cake from Nino's Home. A few months ago, I did something similar, it's from Emma's Goodies. This recipe was a five minute chocolate cake with no oven, no pan. I will link the video down below if you're interested in watching. The other recipe used the microwave to bake the chocolate cake, but in today's recipe, we're using the stove top. So two different methods of baking a cake. I decided I would give it a try, test it out, and see if this actually works. We only need three ingredients as I said. The main ingredient is our Oreo cookies. We also need some baking powder and I have the milk in the fridge. We are going to open up this bad boy and separate the cookie from the cream. I haven't had Oreos in a while so I'm really looking forward to this. We all know what Oreos look like. I need 28 cookies. Let me see if we have enough. Alright, so we're one cookie short but that's okay. We're just, we're going to make do. I've never done this so hopefully it'll be quite easy. Why did I just gasp? There we go. All right. I believe this is relatively painless and voila. Number one, done. All right, so while I'm going through all of this, let's talk about Vince Lee. So Vince Lee, AKA Vincent Wei Guan Lee, immigrated from China to Canada in 2001. He came with his wife, Anna, and they resided in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Vince was a computer software engineer in Beijing. And he also completed a computer programming program at a local college in Canada. However, he was never able to find a job in his field. Unfortunately, that is the reality for a lot of immigrants. My parents were engineers as well and they had a difficult time finding jobs in their fields after we immigrated to canada they will work random jobs until they finally were able to find those jobs while well, this is going by so smoothly is it because my house is really warm like the cream is just falling off the cookies so Vitz never worked in his field. Unfortunately, he will work random odd jobs during his time in Canada. So he worked as a custodian for a church for Walmart. He worked a service in a fast food restaurant. He delivered newspapers as well. He was described to have a quiet demeanor by his co-workers. He didn't really talk to anyone, so no one really talked to him. However, he never showed any signs of anger nor violence. His bosses would describe him as a hard worker as well. Um, the pastor from the church said that he displayed the fact that he felt lucky to have a job, even though he did have trouble communicating um, with others there because of the language barrier. However, to the ones that did know him, the ones that were close to him, family, friends, they knew that he had some quote-unquote mental problems. They did urge him to seek help, to seek medical attention. However, he refused. He was hospitalized in 2003 or 2004. The Ontario police officers 
found him just wandering around in the highway. I'm also not sure what he's doing in Ontario. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Canadian geography, Ontario is in a different province or state, if you will, than Manitoba. It's actually quite far away. So he was just wandering on the highway. He got picked up by police and apparently he was following the sun as per God's orders. So he didn't really have a lot of friends. He kept to himself mostly at work and he also abruptly divorced his wife in 2006. Anna would later tell the authorities that he would go on these random bus trips disappear for a long time and would mother to himself sometimes. After divorcing his wife, Vince moved to Edmonton. Oof. So two days before the Greyhound bus incident, he asked for time off from his job. He was delivering newspapers at the time. His reason for his boss was that he was going to Winnipeg for a job interview. We have separated all of our cream and all of our cookies. Now I'm just going to put all of our cookies into this bag and we are going to crush it. I don't have a blender, so you could definitely use a blender if you have one, but we'll just work with what we have. Oh wait, I missed one. Okay, let me see. Okay, I'm definitely making holes here. I'm going to double bag it. Oh yeah, definitely do it this way. Okay, that is powder. All right, so that's what our cookie looks like. Now I'm going to be putting in one teaspoon of baking powder. There we go. So Vincent would travel between a couple buses before he finally gets on the one with his victim. He also exhibited a very strange behavior during this time, including selling his laptop, his brand new laptop, to a 15-year-old boy for $60. So actually I'm seeing quite a few large chunks and I'm just cr trying to crush them with the back of this measuring cup. By the time Vince gets on the bus, Tim was already riding the bus at the back. So Vince gets on at the front, the first few rows initially. According to a witness, one of the other passengers, he seemed to be a bit agitated and he was also muttering to himself. After a pit stop, Vince moves to the back of the bus right beside Tim McLean. Now, Tim McLean was coming home to Winnipeg from working at a carnival in Edmonton. Tim was 22 years old at the time. He was known to be full of life and just really loved living. You know one of those people who just really exuberated joy and just try to make everyone happy? Well, that was Tim. He was always trying to make someone smile and he loved sports. And now I'm going to add one cup of milk. So when Vince sits down beside Tim, he doesn't really acknowledge him because he has his headphones on and he's just dozing off, right? Here we go. And now we're also going to add our cream from earlier. All of a sudden, Vince pulls out this large knife and starts attacking, just stabbing Tim multiple times in the chest and neck. So one of the passengers saw what was happening across from him he runs a bus driver to call him to pull over, right? So the bus driver pulls over the bus and everyone was able to flee from the bus. They barricade Vince inside the bus, preventing him from escaping. He also tries to escape by trying to drive the bus away. However, he wasn't able to do so because the driver had engaged the emergency system, which just basically rendered the bus useless. So Vince, according to the other passengers from outside the bus, would pace back and forth and he will mutter to himself. He will also go back and mutilate Tim's body further. It became clear that he beheaded Tim. He would also wave the severed head around and show it to the other passengers. So a lot of them, this was obviously extremely horrifying 
they were between crying and vomiting. The time of the incident was around almost 7 p.m. So by 8.30, the RCMP had arrived at the scene and after half an hour, a special tactical unit arrived and negotiator arrives as well. But Vince would stay on the bus for the next few hours and he would further dismember Tim. And he also started consuming some of his body and this was witnessed by several police officers. In the end, around 1.30, finally Vince tried to escape the bus through a window and they were able to apprehend him shortly after. I'm not sure why he was able to stay on the bus for so long. So what they found after arresting Vince was pretty horrifying. They found Tim's body parts in plastic bags all over the bus. They found Tim's ear, nose, and tongue inside Vince's pockets. They were never able to recover a part of Tim's heart and his eyes. This was believed to be consumed by Vince. One of the other passengers also noted that Tim's behavior, Tim's demeanor was very calm and he was almost methodical. There wasn't any anger emanating from him. So he didn't say anything, nothing was really recorded during his arrest except that he did plea for his life. He said that, I am guilty, please kill me, to the police officer. Alrighty, so I have my pen over here. I've got some parchment paper and I've also greased the bottom as well so our cake wouldn't stick to the bottom. So let's pour everything and we can keep this on the stove. Crimes like this scare me so much because it's so random and senseless and you can't prevent it at all. I mean, that could have been anyone. That could have been me. Like, I doze off all the time during my commutes when I was in university. All the time. Like, there's absolutely no way you can stay vigilant every day of your commute. All right, so in the video, he used low heat, one pan on top of the other. So I'm putting the big one down here and then I'm going to put the other pan with the cake mixture up here. I really hope this works. I'm not so sure about it. I've never tried to bake a cake on the stovetop, so this is a bit dicey for me. <laughs> this is going to be like that for another 40 to 50 minutes. The nation was horrified. It really shocked everyone. I remember this case from when I was a child. I could have been more than no I was in high school actually I was not a child but as a high schooler I don't think I was really paying much to the news and even I knew about this case it was just so horrendous so horrifying and senseless and who would ever think that just going on a random bus that someone can behead you and eat you it, it was nuts <laughs> no pun intended but it was crazy and what's even more strange about this case, at the time, Greyhound um, was putting out this ad in which they had a slogan that said, There's a reason why you've never heard of bus rage. Yes. The reality is sometimes stranger than fiction. They did pull the advertisement later due to multiple complaints. The trial took place in March 2009, almost half a year more than half a year after the incident and it was a fairly short trial it only took place over two days vincent lee did not testify no witnesses testified and both sides actually agreed upon all of the facts so both sides that included the psychiatrist and the lawyers agreed upon the fact that vince experienced a psychotic episode and number two he did not understand what he was doing therefore he also didn't understand what he was doing was wrong this was after multiple several many many psychiatric evaluations by psychiatrists who worked in forensic health vince told psychiatrists that he was hearing voices from god and these voices were telling him to quote unquote eliminate the force of evil being tim so he had to eliminate tim vince was diagnosed with schizophrenia only after vince was arrested he started coming to the fact that he did something wrong 
because they were putting handcuffs on him, they were leading him away, treating him like a murderer. Even after his arrest, he had trouble believing the fact that he ate Tim's body. The psychiatrist said that, you know, there's not just one victim in this case, there's actually two victims. Imagine like one day you wake up and realize that you've actually murdered someone and you ate some of their body parts. So Vincent Lee was charged with second degree murder. However, he was found not criminally responsible due to mental illness. So what does the sentencing mean? Well, he's not going to prison, but it's not exactly a get out of jail free card either. He will be going to a high security mental health facility where they will treat him for schizophrenia. He will also be under the authority of a provincial review board who determines whether or not he is able to reintegrate back into society. And usually they do it in steps. Now, what was the reaction from the parents? They were not pleased. They were not happy with the sentencing whatsoever. Tim's mother did try to lobby to change the criminal code so that people who were found in CR still served jail time. I'm not sure where I stand with that. However, I am very sympathetic towards the victim's family. They just lost their son to something completely random. And the person who murdered them graphically, it wasn't just, it was prolonged. They filed their body. The person was found to be not criminally responsible. They're not going to serve jail time and they could possibly reintegrate back into society after six, seven years is something I came and grasp. The number of cases deemed in CDRMD are actually is actually quite small. They looked at data across three different provinces three of the biggest provinces and the NCR cases for one year was just a little bit over 200 compared to the number of cases across Canada, which was for one year over 260,000. All right, everyone, I just checked up on our cake and it is still very much liquidy, but it's getting there. It's definitely solidifying. The heat was way too low when I did it for the first 45 minutes. So I've set a timer for 20 minutes and we shall see what it looks like after. So in the meantime, I think I'm also going to make the chocolate glaze. I have some chocolate chips here and I have my whipping cream here and the video just says to get this to really, really hot and then melt the chocolate chips inside. So I'm going to pop this into the microwave and I shall be back. Alrighty, so this is super, super hot. Excellent. We're just going to stir this in and hopefully it will dissolve. Wait a second, why didn't I just heat the chocolate chips with the heavy cream? So it seems like Vince really responded well to the treatment he received during his stay at the health mental health facility. He will gradually have more and more freedoms throughout the years. For example, in 2010, he was given the ability to have supervised outdoor walks and this would gradually escalate to an absolute discharge in 2017. So that meant he was able to live independently with no legal obligations or restrictions. Basically, he's been reintegrated back into society like another citizen. He's also changed his name to Will Baker. Ooh, it's starting to get really dark. I like this. The family understandably was not happy with this. They believe that he shouldn't be back into society completely unrestricted. And it was really quite a short sentence, if you will. Another tragic event related to this case is that one of the RCMP officers who responded to the incident committed suicide a few years afterwards. His family said that it was largely due to severe PTSD and it was assumed that it was PTSD related to this incident. All right, I will be right back when our cake is ready and then I can share some of my final thoughts on this case. All right, everyone, I am so excited. Our cake is finally done. Let me bring it out. One, two, three. It came out really easily. Wow. Oh, it smells so good right now. Oh, look at that. 
Gonna be like, oh, is this too much? Oh, jeez. Oh my gosh. Okay, just women. Just women. In the chocolate place. Bon appetit. This is very, very good. This is very moist. The glaze was definitely worth it. This is such a great alternative to oven baking. It's so moist, so nice. I am very pleasantly surprised with this. In terms of the case, it was a tragic situation overall. I do believe that people with mental illness who have committed serious violent crimes such as murder can be completely rehabilitated. However, I also believe that it is unlikely. So with that said, would I be completely comfortable with them being my neighbors per se? I don't know. I don't know. Keep in mind that the reoffend rates for people who have been found in CR are extremely low compared to the general criminal population. One study showed that the reoffend rate for people found in CR over 35 years is less than 20% compared to the general criminal population has an average of around 20% within the first six months of release. Another study showed that the reoffend rate for serious violent crimes for people found in CR is less than 1%. Given all of that, what do you guys think about the case? Do you believe that people can completely rehabilitate, reintegrate back into society after committing serious heinous crimes. All right, so that's it for me. This cake was so good. I highly, highly recommend it. I will leave the link to the video down below. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please leave your thoughts on the case down below and I will see you next time. Bye.